Hello again. Next up in our video series, we're going to be talking about section drawings. So unlike a plan drawing where we're cutting horizontally through a building and sort of seeing what that is as a measurable two-dimensional drawing, we will be cutting vertically through the same building, uh, the entire building. And that means from the ground up to the top of the roof uh, and showing what that looks like when we slice through and see basically inside and we see the floors and walls, etc., all being cut through. So in order to create a section drawing, we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, first, we're going to need to gather some more information, just like we did with the plan. Some of that information with regard to a section will be specific measurements, like we did with the plan. And in other cases, it's merely going to be observations and some estimates about how things work on the particularly the exterior of the building. The other thing that we will be doing is we'll be starting with a plan and generating the section from that plan. That's why it's important that you have a reasonably accurate plan to generate the section because that'll make things a lot easier. If we have an accurate plan, we already know the positionings of walls uh, along the line that we will use to sort of slice through the building. So we can start with those measurements just generating them from the drawing and I'll show how that's done. To demonstrate this I'll be drawing the same space here, my office, but I do want to emphasize that I'm only doing a, a small portion of this building. Uh, again to give the demonstration you will be cutting through the entire building in one direction or another that's really up to you, uh, although in the case of Art and Architecture North, the best strategy is to cut along a north-south line that cuts through the building so that what we will see is a cut through that hallway outside of our studio, we'll see the studio space, and then we will see that glass wall that faces north in Art and Architecture North. Here in Art and Architecture South, it's probably a bit easier if you were to cut uh, the section again running north-south kind of, kind of crosswise through the building or perpendicular to the center line of the building right which is running in this direction uh, from the entrance all the way to the back so we're gonna cut across that line you could do it either way but I think it'll be easier and a bit more understandable if you were to cut it in this direction meaning north-south a line that's running north-south so what I've done here is I've simply taped down the drawing that I was working on earlier. Uh, in this case, you can see that it is made up of these two drawings, the one I did of my office, overlaid with the one that I did of the stair. What I'm going to do here is, is simply focus on this area right here, and I'm going to cut a what I would call a partial section of this building right through my office to demonstrate uh, how to develop a section. Uh, so that's what I'm going to focus on. As I said before, you could, you're going to be doing the entire building, whether it's in this direction or in this direction, in either case, Art and Architecture South or North. And in both cases, I did recommend to cut it North-South, right? Which would be in this direction. But in this case, since I'm just going to focus on the office here, I'm going to cut the section through here so that you can see what that looks like. As I said earlier, I'm going to need to get some fresh measurements in the vertical dimension. For the plan, we were only focused about horizontal dimensions, but we need to figure out how high the ceiling is relative to the floor, how high the ceiling upstairs is and the ceiling downstairs, because as I said before, we're cutting through the entire building from the ground all the way up to the roof. So I got a measurement of 9 feet 7 inches. Next thing I need to do is figure out how deep the floor is above and below. So I've got to go to a stair and start kind of measuring in that space where is the floor above relative to the floor that I'm standing on. And same thing down below me. Where is this floor in relation to the floor all the way down below? Then when I'm in those spaces, above or below, I can do the same thing I just did, measure from the floor to the ceiling, and that will give me 
how thick the floor is, right? In this case, we've got kind of a dropped in ceiling, uh, but I'm just measuring to there and I need to know what that distance is from this ceiling to the floor above. So that's why I need the measurement inside this space, but also the measurement from this floor to the floor above. To do that, we go into a stair hall and figure that out. In order to give myself uh, a place to take notes, I've just done a quick sketch of what the section of the building would be like on the exterior. I'll show you about kind of how to observe some of this stuff on the roof in just a minute when I go outside. But for now, my office is on this second level, and that dimension that I just got was 9 feet 7. So I'm going to give myself some dimension strings here uh, of the important things that I need to measure, okay? And I'm going to do this a couple of different ways. As I mentioned before, I am looking for things like this dimension. That's what I just found from there, from the floor in here to the ceiling. And that was 9 feet 7 inches. I also said I need to figure out what this distance is from the floor here inside my office to the floor up above, right? That's not the same line as the ceiling. The floor to the ceiling above has some thickness. I don't know what that thickness is, but I have to figure that out. So I've got to figure out from this floor to that floor, and if I take that number and subtract 9 feet 7, I will understand what this dimension is. The other things that I'm doing here, I'm just kind of taking some guesses. I, this is not a measured drawing yet, right? I'm going to turn that into a measured drawing when I start drafting it. This is merely a place to take notes. So I did have to kind of observe some things. I noticed that outside the ground level kind of drops off like that. And I assume that inside the floor level, it may or may not be above the ground. Not super important, but I could figure that out by measuring a little bit outside. Uh, and I know that the roof projects a little bit, and I know that it slopes up at some angle. I don't exactly know what that angle is, and I'm not going to climb the roof to figure it out, but I will step back from the building and try and observe that and see if I can take a reasonable guess at what this angle is. And if I'm not absolutely precise, that's okay. I just want to be kind of in the ballpark. In order to get the dimension from this floor to the floor above, I have to work my way up the stairs and measure how high they are and measure where that landing is up there and then continue on the stairs that go up above and all the way upstairs to find out how far <laughs> the floor upstairs is vertically from this floor down here. As I mentioned before when I was measuring stairs and showing how to draw those, each of these risers will be the same dimension. So I don't necessarily have to measure every single one, right? I can measure one and then count them. One, two, three, four, all the way up and add that up. And I can get from the bottom, this floor down here to that landing right up there. We got 20 risers at seven and a half inches each. Now I'm up at the top of the stairs, and so I need to measure from the floor here up to the ceiling there. That measurement is nine feet six inches. The other thing that I'm going to do while I'm up here is at least take a, a look at the roof. I don't know that my tape measure could get up there and measure from <laughs> the center of that interior space down to this floor. Uh, I don't know that that's entirely necessary, but I do want to observe it carefully and think about how that's going to affect the drawing. And of course, I need to also measure from the floor that my office is on, the second level, down to that landing and around down to the floor below so that I have the same measurement uh, from this floor to the lower level that I have from this floor to the upper level. They probably won't be the same distance, so that's why I have to measure this as well as from this floor up above.
Okay, that was interesting because uh, the thing I said before about stairs always being the same was not really the case on these stairs. This flight of stairs coming down here is uh, eight risers at seven and a half inches each. But when you turn the corner, there are 10 risers that are seven inches each. And then the top one right around off this landing was one riser that was six inches. So I've got to add all of those up to figure out what is the dimension from this floor that I'm standing on right now down to the lower level. And finally, I'm down at the lower level and I need to measure the floor to the ceiling down here. And that is eight feet, six inches. Now I'm outside and I need to do some observing and as much measuring as I can do. Uh, I'm going to focus on this kind of back corner because uh, that's where my office is. But I'd like to also get some information about oh, the, the heights of these windows, like where the top of the window opening is, where the bottom is, maybe in relation to my uh, office window, because I can measure my office window where that is on the interior and then get some sense of where the other windows are in relation to that. Obviously, I could go back up in that stair hall and measure a couple of those windows uh, if I was going to be cutting through there. And the other thing I want to take a couple of good guesses at would be the, uh, the roof overhang and the angle of the roof. If I were cutting a section that ran through this kind of arched entry here, then I would have to be careful about, you know, what are the measurements at least that I can gather from the plan, but also some information about the heights, even if it means just kind of taking an educated guess, right? Uh, you're not going to climb up there and get those measurements, but you can stand back and take a good look at them and try and draw them relative proportions, right? And of course the same could be said of the back of Art and Architecture North where these window openings are fairly small, but one way that you can figure out the dimensions of them is to count the number of brick courses, the horizontal brick courses from the top of a window to the bottom of a window. And then you could just like walk over to the building with your tape measure and measure how many of those uh, courses or what the measurement is of those courses. So I'll do that with one of these uh, small windows like right there. I'll just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got a little bit lost there. <laughs> Whatever it is, that number of courses, uh, of brick courses, I can walk over to the side of the building, take my tape measure, and let's say it's ten brick courses. I can measure that and that gives me a vertical dimension for that window. Once again, if I were to be cutting through uh, this, if, if my line of cut went straight through here, like all the way down the middle of this building, I would have to pay some attention to what is called a parapet, that kind of projection up there on the roof and the window that's in it and the arch below it and the arch below that all the way down to the, to the ground. Again, you don't need super precise measurements, but a lot of those measurements are going to be taken care of by figuring out the interior measurements. That's why I spent time doing that. So if I get far enough away from the building that I'm looking at, I can start to get a pretty good sense of what's happening on the roof. I can start to make some, some educated guesses about the roof angles and things like these little projections that we're seeing kind of right there. Uh, how this roof, you know, kind of connects to this upper roof. It's starting to go out of focus, there we go. Uh, so you really kind of need to take a step back sometimes and take a good look at what's happening in order to understand how to create the section when it comes to the roof. 
as I recommended before, at least for art and architecture south here, I think it makes some sense to cut through the building in this direction, perpendicular to the central kind of line of axis of this building. If you're going to do that, however, if you were to cut here, let's say, and look that way, then you would see things like this projecting piece of the building here and its associated, you know, roof parts and pieces, right? You would also start to see what we would call the roof monitor, that piece that's up there. If you were to cut, on the other hand, kind of further back, back here, past that, and again, look that way, then those kinds of elements are behind you, but that other piece of building back there would still be in front of you, and so you would see that projecting out and coming down to the ground. One more issue to pay attention to while you're outside is where the building comes down and meets the ground. That isn't necessarily going to be the same on both sides. So for example, we see things like this window that's at the lower level. If we walk around to the other side, probably that window is going to be higher up on the wall as compared to the ground because we can see that the ground starts to drop away and it wraps down and around the building. I'll show that from another angle here in just a moment. And here we are on the other side of kind of the entry of Art and Architecture South and we can see just what I was talking about there, those basement windows. Uh, in relation to the ground, the ground over here is much lower than it is up on the other side of the building because there's a little slope that comes down here. If you were to cut through this building in this direction, you know, running that way, then the ground level on this side of your drawing needs to represent where it is in relation to the building. And same thing on the other side. And of course the same thing is true here when we're looking at Art and Architecture North, where the bottom level comes out to this plaza. If we were to go up these stairs, well the other side of the building is higher or at least the ground level is higher in relation to the building on that side than it is on this side. Other thing you will want to pay close attention to uh, are things like this sort of projection here. You're cutting down through this building in that direction, you'd see that that floor slab kind of projects out over these windows. That should show up in your section. It's usually pretty safe to assume that the roof of Art and Architecture North is flat. It probably isn't truly flat, but uh, if you look closely, if you were to go up, for example, into the senior painting studio up there, you'd see that there is, uh, there are, excuse me, some skylights up there. And that would be an important thing as well to show in the section of this building. So here I am back in my office. I am going to have to do a little bit of math to figure out uh, these things like this, the distance between this floor and this floor that I uh, gathered some information about the stairs and same thing from this floor to this floor. So I'm going to do that right now and kind of come up with a, uh, the overall dimension rather than, you know, eight risers at seven and a half inches, etc. Obviously, if you have a calculator that can calculate inches, convert them to feet and inches, that would be really useful. I don't happen to have that right now, so I'm going to have to do a certain amount of that uh, just kind of in my head. <laughs> Okay, so I've done my math and now I know that uh, down below here this is 11 feet 4 inches and up here this is 12 feet 6 inches. Okay, those are important dimensions <clears throat> because that's again how I figure out these kinds of dimensions between the, the floor above and the ceiling of this level and the floor that I'm standing on and the ceiling of the level below. I also just kind of took a guess out here at this dimension of the roof overhang. I'm saying it's about five feet. That's what it looked like. It might be a little bit more than that. It's actually a, a pretty sizable overhang there. And I'm kind of taking a bit of a guess uh, that the roof angle here, that this angle is about 
30 degrees. Again, a guess, but uh, an educated guess, you know, one that I got from actually looking. I didn't just guess out of the blue. And then finally, the other uh, dimensions that I picked up here, I figured out where this window was by going halfway up the stairs and measuring from the landing of those stairs up to the bottom, the window sill, and then measured the window inside uh, to get that dimension. So I, I have to kind of go back to my stair measurements here to figure out exactly where that landing was. When I figure that out, then I can figure out where the sill and the head of that window are. These windows uh, down here, I kind of figured out where those were uh, on the exterior. You saw that. Um, I'm not 100% sure where this, the window sill is in relation to the floor here. Um, but I did get this dimension, right? So I got the dimension from the bottom window sill in my office to the top, the window head of the floor below. So this dimension, I don't even really need to know because I can measure these things, the sill and the head from another place, from the sill of my window here. And of course now I'm realizing I don't have that dimension and that dimension. So I'll measure those right now. And those are two feet. 10 inches and 5 feet 10 inches. And I think now I've got kind of all the information that I need to do uh, this section right here. I'm going to cut through uh, this window and incidentally it is generally a, a conventional thing to cut through as many windows and doors as you can. So even though these are a little bit you know separated if I were to cut a straight line through here then what you'd see is a solid wall. Um, but what we want to see is openings in spaces as much as possible. So again, that's a convention. You're not necessarily uh, literally cutting along a single line. Generally, that is what you're doing. But if we have a door like this, we might want to represent that, that we can get in and out of this building, or excuse me, in and out of this office through this door. So even though the door is not right there, we're going to show that door. So I'll need the, the head of that door as well, just, you know, from the floor up. And one more thing I do before I really get started here and put down a piece of trace paper is I, I do want to know the overall dimensions of this drawing. Uh, I'm going to use this plan to help me generate the drawing. And so this section drawing is going to be at the same scale that I did this drawing at. So I have to figure out what is the overall, you know, what's the overall height of this uh, in this case because I'm not cutting uh, a section all the way through but the height here is important to me and it's got to be at this scale so that I know how big a piece of trace paper to use. Okay so I figured out uh, kind of the overall dimensions from top to bottom and gave myself enough trace paper to go right over the top of my plan uh, and what I'm going to do is cut the section line through here and then build the drawing from that. What I'm going to do is just start by drawing a single line uh, across the plan, basically in the place where I'm going to cut the section. So just a simple light guideline straight across like that. Now, because I have figured out uh, where things need to be overall in relation to my piece of trace and the section. I'm going to say that that line that I just drew is going to represent uh, in the section drawing this floor, the floor in my office, and I will sort of build everything off of that. One of the great advantages of having a, a plan to work from is that we know that the wall inside is here and the wall outside is there. So I can give myself those guidelines here. And then inside the exterior wall, I can kind of carry that one all the way down there. Uh, I also know where the exterior face of the wall is, but there is this little projection here of that stone. So 
above the window sill, it's going to be this dimension. And below the window sill, it's actually going to be this dimension. So even though that's not where the window sill is, I'm just giving myself those guidelines. So I have the interior wall thickness here and the exterior wall thickness uh, above the window sill is here and below the window sill is there. I also have my dimensions of that window vertically. So two feet 10 up to the window sill and then five feet 10 up to the head of the window. And now I can draw my line for the window sill, which is right there, and the window head, which is there. Now I can be a little bit more clear about this projection here. I do know that that kind of tucks in a little bit on the exterior. That, that's sort of a projecting stone cap right there. And then I'll just draw a guideline coming down. So I have the wall thickness, the floor line, the height of the window, the window sill, the window head, and still that interior wall. I also measured the height of the door, this door down here, but I'm going to pretend that it is in line with the window just so that we can show we're cutting through the door. And that was uh, seven feet. So there's eight, there's seven right there. So that is the head of the door. Again, this is the floor all the way out to that wall. I also know some other things about this, like the interior height of the ceiling is nine feet seven. Which is right there. I draw that ceiling line. And now you can start to see my office taking shape here in section, of course, right? So I've just built the walls off of the plan and now I'm just assigning different heights to the different parts of the section. I also know that from the floor I'm standing on here to the floor above, that's 12 feet 6. I can draw that line. You'll notice that's a pretty significant amount of space there because the ceiling up inside here uh, is a kind of drop-in tile ceiling and there's going to be some amount of wooden structure in there that's supporting the roof or excuse me the floor above this one so that's a pretty substantial amount of space. I'm going to do the same thing in uh, the downward direction so from this floor that I'm standing on to the floor below me is 11 feet 4 inches so that represents the floor one level below me. I also know that from that floor up to the ceiling down below is 8 feet 6 inches because I measured that down there. Now I've got that. That's the ceiling immediately below the floor that I'm standing on. Now I want to take a look at this window that is below my window on the exterior. So I got those dimensions when I was outside, 3 feet 9 from the sill to the head, and then 4 feet 0 from the sill to the head of that window. Now that seems like it's off. That seems like it's a little bit strange. I'm not quite sure how that dimension happened because that window is showing to be effectively where the ceiling is down below. That might be as a result of measuring this ceiling in a space where the ceiling drops lower than it does in around the perimeter or just below me. It might also be that that window down there might be what we call a blind window. 
Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do, uh, now that I've got that ceiling and the floor and the floor below, is I'll put uh, the window below here. Use my measurements that I collected from outside and put that into place. I measured that from the sill of my window down to the head of the window below. So I'm going to measure that or use my measurement for that to find the head of that window and then from the head of that window down to the sill of that window. And then uh, there's the floor there and then outside down below my office the ground level, just from a quick observation I made, is a little bit lower than that floor. There's kind of a step out there and it drops down. So I'm actually just going to freehand that <clears throat> as though that's, you know, a ground line kind of falling away from the building there. Now, I'm not exactly sure what's happening below my office because I couldn't get into that space. But I'm going to make a reasonable assumption that the wall is in the same place as it is here. So I'm going to add that interior wall there. Now I can start kind of working my way up to the next level above my office and up to the roof. So I've already established where the floor is by looking at my measurements here. Now I need to go up to the interior ceiling there. 9 feet 6 above that floor. And I'm, going I'm also going to uh, locate where the window above is, but that's going to take a little bit more work because I measured that from the landing of that stair. So I kind of have to figure that out. That was 10 stairs up at 7.5 inches each. So I'll have to do a little bit of math <clears throat> to figure out where the sill of that window is. So I figured out the landing is six feet three from this floor. So I'm just gonna give myself a quick little kind of guideline for where that is. That line is not gonna end up showing up in the section, but now I have that located, that guideline, and I can go six feet two up from that line. It's right about there. I'm going to continue my exterior wall line upward here and get to the head of that window. That's a little odd because that window, at least the one that is uh, in the stair hall, comes down a bit lower than the other windows out there because in the stair hall, as you can see in the plan down there, that window is kind of right in here in the plan. And because the stairs go down, <clears throat> there's more space. Maybe you remember looking at the exterior of the building, how big that window was. Um, so there are going to be some inconsistencies like that that you might want to try and work out. I'm going to assume that uh, the base of this window in the office directly above mine is uh, a couple feet up from there. Once again, I can give myself a line here at the interior wall. And that's going to go all the way up to the ceiling uh, that I measured up above. Now I want to <clears throat> put in what I think is the roof projection and then the angle going up. And it has some thickness. Oops, so maybe I'm, uh, I need to rearrange the camera here. Sorry about that. I'm working on this piece right up here. Uh, and I'm going to take a guess at how thick that was. It's maybe, I don't know, six or eight inches, something like that. And so we know how thick that edge is. And then, as I said, uh, that roof angle, I'm guesstimating that that is about... 30 degrees, so I'm just going to use my 30 degree triangle and put that in place. <clears throat> now I've got pretty much everything that I need laid out, all the way from the floor down below up to the ceiling of that level, 
up to the floor that I'm standing on, up to the ceiling of the room that I'm in, up to the floor above that ceiling, all the way up to the ceiling of that level, and I'm showing the roof profile and the exterior wall with its windows located and the ground line outside. I'm not at all worried about foundations and that kind of thing. This is really just talking about the profile of the walls I'm cutting through, the floors, the ceilings, the windows. I'm really just focused on those profile lines. Anything that I can't see, like what the foundation is doing down below, I'm not going to draw it because I don't really know what it's doing. I'm only focusing on the spaces and drawing the profile lines of those spaces, both on the exterior of the building and throughout the interior, as well as, again, the roof. And because I have all of that stuff laid out, now what really remains to be done is to fatten up these lines, basically, to make them thicker, heavier lines that are going to show that I've cut through this building in section. I'm going to give a little bit of information at the windows, just like you would draw them in plan. You'll see that when I'm done. I'll, I'll do that in these cases. Uh, and then we're effectively done with this section. And after adding some line weights, you can start to see the section really becoming more clear. One thing that I will do here is slide a piece of paper up in here and you'll really start to see it become clear because I'm blocking out the plan below. And now you can see what the section would look like. So this is the space below my office. This is my office with the window and the door being cut through. And that's the space above my office with its window and the roof projection. Uh, and the ground line outside where the exterior wall comes down and just goes out to the ground. So that's basically it. Again, you're going to be doing this with the entire building. So you are going to need to get some more information as much as you can about you know, spaces below and above the space where you drew your plan, the space or the level where you drew your plan, you should have plenty of information there. But to really complete the section, we need some information about the roof uh, and the space above and below all the way down to the ground, right? So from the ground all the way up to the roof, you've got to get at least enough information where you can start to fill that in uh, a level above, a level below. If you're in art and architecture north, same thing, okay? That's going to do it for now. That's the, the most kind of basic, straightforward way of creating a section, particularly from a plan that you've already developed. Certainly there's, uh, you know, some things I haven't gotten into in this explanation, but that's where looking at the examples that I show in class and looking at your textbook really comes in uh, to play. You really kind of have to maybe start answering some of those questions that you might have by looking at examples and looking at the textbook. I hope this helps and I uh, hope you enjoy drawing a section. It's one of the drawing types that I really enjoy drawing because it really starts to talk about a lot of different aspects of architecture. The relationship from exterior space to interior and the kind of vertical disposition of spaces that we spend our time in in these buildings. And so I hope you do enjoy it. Uh, and please let me know if there's questions below uh, any way that I can help. Thanks. See you next time.